You know, one of the most frustrating things in life is when you make a big, big mistake, but you don't have a chance to correct that mistake. So you got to sit there and you got to let it marinate for the longest. But you see, with these Baltimore Ravens, they made some huge mistakes last week, but it's only week three. So they have a chance to start correcting those mistakes right away. Opportunities like this, they don't come around too often. So it's important that Baltimore make sure they make the most of it. And it starts with the Patriots. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got to made it. How to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens. Like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And in this video, Ravens got a game who's sitting at one and one. Patriots got a game. They sitting at one and one. Uh, and they take on each other this Sunday at Foxborough Stadium. At Gillette Stadium. I'm not even sure if the name changed. They take on the Patriots at Patriots Stadium. And this should be an interesting one. A very interesting one because... I didn't know. I, I did not realize. I had no clue that the Ravens, they've never won up there in the regular season. And when I saw that, what are they like? 0-6 there in the regular season, something like that? I was like, what? Really? Because I, I was surely thinking, okay, I, I know Flacco had to have won some regular season games up there, but no. The last one I remember, a uh, regular season game, was when um, – when, when Flacco and the Ravens, when they got okie doped at the very end, it was the game where uh, Tom Brady just looked at the ref. Looked at him. When Terrell Suggs was, he, he would just sniff Tom Brady. Tom Brady looked at the ref. The ref said, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Throw the flag. And I'm like, really? Come on now. But I was like, wow, the Ravens really haven't won up there. Then, of course, Lamar in the rain game a couple years back, uh, Lamar versus Cam Newton. The Ravens lost that game, and that, ooh, that was an ugly one. Like, literally ugly. And Lamar talked about that. He said that was the probably the worst weather game that he's ever played in. Uh, but anyway, the Ravens have an opportunity uh, this Sunday to, to right several wrongs. One, the first one being their, an opportunity to actually win uh, at the pay, in Foxborough, um, but also get on the right side of the win column. Um, because you certainly do not want to start the season and again it's not just about how you start it's about how you finish but getting off to a better start would would do very would do wonders for you uh just for your team uh obviously with the record but for your team mentally too because you don't want to be sitting around posted up sitting at one and two and get ready to take on those buffalo bills who you know they're going to present their own challenges but they'll cross that road when they get there but as far as the uh the new england patriots um, this is a team, obviously, you got one of the best coaches in the league and, and of all time. Obviously, had all the success in the world, um, of course, with Mr. Brady. And now that Brady is gone, he's trying to show like, hey, I can make this thing happen without him. Hasn't been pretty so far, but hey, they did make playoffs last year. And, and Ravens didn't, even though Ravens, they was all banged up. But that's a whole other story. Mac Jones. Mac Jones um, for the Baltimore Ravens. This it's such an important game, in my opinion, for their pass rush to try to get back on track. Mac Jones is not this super scrambling quarterback, but he can move a little bit if he needs to. Um, but it's important that the Ravens, they disrupt him from jump. The defense has to be on it this week. And while the Patriots may not have the receiving core that the, uh, that the Dolphins do, <laughs> I don't think most teams do. Uh, it's still important that the Ravens, they start this thing off right and they finish it off the right way. Travis Jones, he should be back in this game. And Travis Jones, the, the element that he can provide is just really pushing that pocket back, providing an interior pass rush. And him being back can be so huge. I would also love... For Justin Matabike to have a bounce back. Well, really the whole Ravens defense, but specifically Justin Matabike to have a bounce back game. In week one, he looked amazing. Amazing. 
And then week two, we didn't really hear much from them at all. So it would be nice if they could cause interior pressure on this young quarterback. Because if you start giving them interior pressure, like if you run, you, you, can, you can run to the right, you can run to the left or whatnot, but then, hey, that's when you got Justin Houston in the way to go ahead and close that up. Interior pressure, in my opinion, is some of the best pressure because if, if, if pressure comes from the outside, he can step up. But if it comes from the inside, where do you go? Where do you go? So interior pressure, can, it can fluster even the best of the best at quarterback. Um, so I'm hoping that, and Calais Campbell too. Hopefully Calais Campbell, uh, with all his old man strength and old man wisdom, uh, he can make some stuff happen uh, this week as well. Um, Marcus Peters. Uh, again, Tyreek Hill is Tyreek Hill. Like, I, he just got beat by Tyreek Hill, straight up. Straight up. I know what well, live while I'm watching the game, I'm thinking, man, he could have turned his head around. Um, and he could have, but I, it, it ain't happened. Tyreek Hill just beat him, and that was that. Uh, so, Marcus Peters, this game, now now he's got a, a game where he got to sort of get his feet under him and whatnot, get, to, get back in the scheme of things. And will he still be on a pitch count this week? I wouldn't think so, but hey, you never know. Cause Ravens may, cause they've been taking a lot of stuff extra cautiously uh, this season. So maybe they continue with Marcus Peters. We'll see. Marlon Humphrey, uh, he returned to practice, um, so he should be good to go. Maybe for the full game uh, this game. Cause remember he was playing, he was playing last week, and he played last week, and the Ravens defense was doing a great job. Marlon Humphrey went out, everything fell apart immediately, immediately right away, and I'm like, whoa. Oh, okay. Well, all right then. So again, Marlon Humphrey, his value to the Baltimore Ravens and to a lot of Ravens fans too. I think last week it certainly went up a whole lot. Um, the secondary. Uh, all this week, the talk has been about their communication. Well, really all last week uh, against the Dolphins after that loss. The talk has been about communication. This game for the defense is so important um, for both the players and then even more importantly, the coaching staff. It's so important that the coaching staff, they, they recognize, re, you got to recognize weaknesses. You got to recognize mismatches. You got to recognize holes on your defense. You got to recognize all of this type of stuff and step in. Step in and take over. It's very important. And this is why veterans, veterans' presence and their role on the team is so important. Chuck Clark, as the communicator, uh, he's, he's always talked about for how smart he is, how just how, how he really understands so much different things. It's important that he like, hey, if you see something, say something. Same with Marcus Williams. Marcus Williams was brought in to be a playmaking safety for the Ravens. And hey, that 70 million dollars has been worth it. Um, so it's important that they try to help the young guys. That's the safeties and also the corners, too, obviously. They really try to help these guys and try to help put them in positions where they can be successful. They can have the best chance and the best opportunity as success. But again, that all starts with the coaching staff. So again, this, this is a huge week, a huge opportunity to have a bounce back week uh, against the New England Patriots uh, and that offense. Now, we know, um, of course, a couple of years ago, the Patriots, they spent big money uh, at tight end. Um, they brought in what Hunter uh, Hunter Henry and John U. Smith. Um, so it's important that, and I'm not sure how they're doing this season because I really haven't kept up with the Patriots in detail like that. Uh, but it's super important that the Ravens, the middle of the field, they take care of business there because a lot of times, especially against the Jets, the middle of the field was wide open. And Dolphins, they got they got a little bit of theirs too, but really. With the Dolphins, Tyreek here and Jalen Waddle, they were just running all over the place, really. So it was like the whole field. They opened up the whole field. But anyway, with the Patriots, um, it's important that you take away the middle of the field uh, as best you can. Um, so, yeah, man, I'm just – I'm hoping that my, my, my biggest concern this, uh, this game is really for Ravens defense just to, to get back on track. Now, special teams, I expect special teams to continue to be special teams. Devin DuVernay. Uh, he should be back. I know he was in concussion protocol, but he was practicing, so he should be good to go. Um, so, hey, if you want to get another kick return for a touchdown, ain't nobody going to complain. We ain't going to complain. So, hey, go do your thing, dude. Um, but it's important that um, Stout uh, put the Patriots in, in bad position uh, when it comes to punting the ball. Hey, hopefully he won't even have to punt the ball. 
that will mean the Ravens are just scoring and scoring. Not not that the Ravens are just not converting fourth downs. Well, hopefully it will mean the Ravens are scoring and scoring and scoring and scoring and scoring. And we don't even have to see Stout out there. But things happen, which we understand. Uh, so when he does punt, it's important that he put them in bad field position because the worst field position you put them in, the more pressure is on Mac Jones, and then hopefully the more pressure the Ravens can get on him in turn. And everything just goes hand in hand. Football, ultimate team sport. So then another part of the team, the third phase of the team, the offense. Lamar Jackson has been uh, just phenomenal this year. Uh, they have had some hiccups. He had, like he had the fumble last game uh, two weeks ago uh, against the Jets. He had that uh, the interception where he should have put the ball a little more to the outside. But hey, stuff happens. Um, hopefully, this will be a game where there are no turnovers. There, I mean, and even with the fumble, he didn't turn it over, but still, uh, that moved them back. So hopefully, they um, they can clean up all the little stuff because it's, it's been little stuff here and there. But I think one of the bigger things that the Ravens will need to clean up is just converting um, on short downs. That has been an issue for, and again, it's only two games, but it's still been an issue for the Ravens these past two games, especially last week against Miami. So again, this is another opportunity for them to correct their wrongs, to fix their mistakes. Another opportunity. Obviously, it's a super, super long season, and, and regardless of how this game goes, uh, you still have, what, 14 games left after this. But to start early, to start building that consistency early, it can go such a long way, such a long way. So with Rashad Bateman, as of this recording of this video, Rashad Bateman did not practice today. It is Friday, so hopefully it's nothing crazy because we ain't heard about Rashad Bateman being hurt or anything like that. So hopefully it's just... Some minor, and he'll be fine. He'll be good to go. Um, but again, De Devin Duvernay, Ravens, keep using him as a receiver. He's a receiver. He said, I don't want that jet sweep name on me no more. Loved it. Demarcus Robinson, he's made big impact plays in every game so far. Again, it's only been two games, but he's made impact games, impact plays in both. Week one, he made a huge, uh, he, he, he made the uh, force the Jets to commit pass interference. That set up a touchdown, and then week two, he was like, you know what? I'm not going to set up a touchdown. I'm going to be the touchdown. So he caught the touchdown pass from Lamar uh, in the end zone. So he's certainly been uh, worth bringing him in. Uh, it's, it's certainly paid off, and he's looked good in the process. Um, so this could be the game where James Prochet, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens with Rashad Bateman. Um, it's, not, it's not even early because, again, I'm recording this on Friday. You know, Friday is the day where uh, – it's usually the day where if they're going to play, it's known. And if they're not going to play, then it's like, okay. But um, we'll see what happens with Bateman. But hopefully he'll be good to go. Now, uh, I would expect J.K. Dobbins to play in this game. A lot of us were thinking that last week was going to be the week. But it seems like this week uh, could be the week that J.K. Dobbins really actually plays. Um, so will he make the big difference uh, in this run game? Hopefully a, a mix of him being back and also the uh, offensive line just blocking better. Uh, if I was the Ravens, this would be a game where I would actually have Josh Oliver inactive and have Nick Boyle active just, just for the run game alone, for the run game alone. And then you could involve him in a pass game, too, but I would have him just for the run game alone just to help that much more in the run game. Because we know they've been having Pat Ricard out there a lot um, as an extra blocker, and he's, of course, been helping. But I would activate Nick Boyle, too. So if you're going to have J.K. Dobbins coming back, put J.K. Dobbins in the best position possible to have, to have success. So bring your, bring your big block and tight end back. Might as well. <laughs> it's like, it's what, you get it. But anyway, um, in this game, I uh, – oh, and, and, and Greg Roman. Si situational. Hopefully the Ravens, situationally, this, this game, they are on point because Bill Belichick, he watches for all that stuff. Bill Belichick is a mastermind when it comes to situational play calling. and Because there, there have been times over the years where you're like, what is Bill Belichick doing? Only to come, come to find out later on in that same game. It's like, oh, 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 ah, that, okay, I get it. So it's important that Greg Roman and the Ravens, their staff just, they pay attention. But I, I think that they should be able to get it done. And I think that the Ravens should be able to get their first win uh, in Foxborough um, this Sunday. Their first regular season win. Regular season win. Because we know in the playoffs, of course. We remember the AFC Championship back in 2012. We even remember the game in, um, what, what, what season was that? Where Ray Rice on the first play. 
It was like an 80-yard touchdown run in the playoffs, and, and Flacco only had to throw the ball like five times that game. Flacco was chilling, man. He was like, oh, man, I can do this in my sleep. Um, but, yeah, I think that the Ravens, they come out on top on this one. I am going to say, uh, I'm going to say 27 to 10. I'm going to say 27 to 10. I think the, the defense has a big bounce back game. Uh, and the offense, they continue to do uh, what they've been doing. They put up points. But this time, they, they actually get some help all the way through the fourth quarter uh, from the defense as well. So I'm going to go 27-10 Ravens on top of this one. And we'll see how it goes. Yeah, this feels like a dream.